Today, let us start a new chapter called as Semiconductor Electronics, the branch of physics which deals with the study of semiconductors and its devices is called as solid state electronics and electron mechanics is known as electronics. So, before going further into this lesson, let us know something about energy bands here. According to Neil Bohr atomic model, in an isolated atom, the energy of its electrons is decided by the orbits in which it revolves. In solids, the atoms are closely packed. There is an interaction between neighboring atoms. So, the outer energy levels of electrons from neighboring atoms would come very close or even could overlap also. So, the group of energy levels which with continuous energy variations is called as energy bands. The group of energy levels with continuous energy variation is called as energy band. So, the next one, the next definition is the energy band which includes the energy levels of valence electrons is called as valence band. The, the energy band which includes the energy levels of valence electrons is called as valence band. Valence band is occupied by valence electrons. So, the next definition is the energy band above the valence band is called conduction band. I will repeat again the energy band above the valence band is called conduction band. Normally, the conduction band is empty or occupied by free electrons. The lowest energy level in the conduction band is shown as Ec and the highest energy level in the valence band is shown as Ev. So, this is how it will be. The gap between the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band is called as energy band gap. So, this is conduction band, this is valence band and the gap between them is called as energy band gap. And normally when, yeah, when the valence electron gets sufficient energy, they get excited to the conduction band. That means an electron when it is excited, it can move from here to here. And EG or energy band gap may be large or small or even zero depending upon the material. The next topic is classification of solids on the basis of energy bands. So, we classify solids into conductors, semiconductors and insulators based on these energy bands. So, the first one is semiconductors here. So, this is the energy band diagram of this conductors. Here, conduction band is here, the valence band is here, the EVEC is here, the energy band gap is almost zero. So, this is the electron energy system. So, in a conductor, the valence band and the conduction band are overlapped. That is, the energy gap is almost equal to zero here. So, as you can clearly see here, conduction band and valence band, they are both overlapped here. Therefore, electrons from valence band can easily move into the conduction band. The electrons from the valence band can easily move into the conduction band. Therefore, the conduction band is completely filled by free electrons. So, here there will be huge amount of free electrons here. As a result, the resistance in the conductor is low and the conductivity is high. So, when the resistance becomes very low, the conductivity becomes very high. The resistance and resistivity increases when, with the increase in temperature. So, the resistance and resistivity, they both increases with the rise in temperature. As the temperature increases, the resistance and resistivity also increases. So, for the, the examples for these conductors are all metals like iron, copper, aluminium, gold, etc. Hmm. The next one is semiconductors. Here, in semiconductors, the valence band 
and conduction band are separated by a small energy gap. So as you can clearly see here, the valence band and the conduction band, they both are separated by a very small distance. The energy gap is less than 3 electron volt here. It is clearly shown that the valence band and the conduction band, they both are separated by an energy gap of 3 electron volt. Because of the small band gap, at room temperature, some electrons from valence band can acquire through energy to cross the energy gap and enter to the conduction band. So, from here to here. Therefore, conduction band is partially filled with free electrons at room temperature. So, only at room temperature, the conduction band will have few electrons. So, few free electrons will come here and they will be here. As a result, the, con the semiconductor conducts the current at room temperature. So, the semiconductor will conduct current only at room temperature. So, the resistance and resistivity decreases with increase in temperature. The resistance and resistivity both decreases with increase in temperature. So, the examples for the semiconductors are silicon and germanium. So, the next one is insulators. In insulators, the valence band and conduction band are separated by large energy gap. As you can see here, there is a large energy gap here. That is, energy gap is greater than 3 electron volt here. It is greater than 3 electron volt. Note that the energy gap is so large that the electrons cannot be excited from valence band to conduction band by thermal excitation. Even by using thermal excitation, we cannot excite an electron from here to here. So, it is very difficult to excite an electron from here to here. It is said that it is almost impossible. So, therefore, the conduction band is completely empty. So, no electrical conduction is possible at room temperature. So, we cannot conduct electricity at room temperature in insulators. So, examples for this insulators are plastic, wood, glass, etc. So, the next topic is classification of solids on the basis of resistivity and conductivity. On the basis of re relative values of electrical conductivity, that is sigma, and resistivity, that is rho, this is electrical resistivity and this is electrical conductivity. Okay? The solids can be broadly classified into conductors, conductors, semiconductors and insulators. So, even on the basis of resistivity and conductivity, the solids can be classified into broadly three categories. So, thus resistivity is always inversely proportional to the conductivity. The resistivity is always inversely proportional to the conductivity. So, the first one is metals, that is conductors. So, metals are substances which easily allow the passage of electrical current through them. I hope you all know this, the metals are the substances which easily allow the passage of electrical current through them. These are having large number of free electrons. These metals will have large amount of free electrons. They possess very low resistivity and high conductivity. So, even the resistivity is also high and even they possess very low resistivity and high conductivity. So, the conductivity is high and the resistivity is low here. I will repeat again, the conductivity is high and the resistivity is low here. So, the resistivity it comes around 10 to the power of minus 2 to 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter and the conductivity it will come around 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 8 sin meter inverse. So, these are the values of resistivity and conductivity. Examples for this conductors or metals are copper, aluminium, etc. 
the next one is semiconductors so semiconductors as a substance where which has few number of electrons at room temperature so it will have few number of electrons at room temperature and the resistivity of semiconductor is less than insulator remember this the resistivity of the semiconductor is less than insulator but more than conductor but more than conductor it has negative temperature coefficient of resistance that is the resistance is inversely proportional to the temperature so the resistance is inversely proportional to the temperature here so the examples for the semiconductors are germanium and silicon so these are the examples for semiconductors so the value of rho that is resistivity will be around 10 to the power of minus 5 to 10 to the power of 6 ohm meter and and the conductivity will be around 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of minus 6 siemens meter inverse the next one is insulators so insulators are substances which has practically no free electrons so it will have no free electrons remember this this insulators will have no free electrons and it does not allow electric current to pass through it so it will never allow electric current to pass through it and it has very high resistivity and low conductivity so it will have high resistivity and low conductivity so you can clearly see here the value of resistivity which is around 10 to the power of 11 to 10 to the power of 19 ohm meter and the value of conductivity which is around 10 to the power of minus 11 to 10 to the power of 9 minus 19 siemens meter inverse so this value is very high and this value is very low here the examples for this insulators are glass rubber etc this is the structure of silicon and germanium the atomic number of silicon is 14 So for the elect the electronic configuration for this is one s two two s two two plus six three s two three p two. So the sex the structure of silicon will be like this, and the atomic number of germanium is thirty two. The electronic configuration for germanium is one s two two s two two plus six three s two three p six three p ten four s two and four p two. So this is the structure of germanium, and this is the structure of silicon here. So. Okay, so now here you need to know the concept of hole here. So this is the concept of hole here. So here the silicon and germanium are tetravalent. The silicon and germanium are tetravalent. Each silicon and germanium atom can form four covalent bonds with the neighboring atoms. Here silicon and germanium can. Four covalent bonds. One, two, three, four. With their neighboring atom. One, two, three, four. With their neighboring atom. At absolute zero. That is zero Kelvin. So this is absolute zero. At absolute zero, all the valence electrons from all the for all the valence electrons form covalent bonds here. So all the valence electrons will form. covalent bonds the conduction band is completely empty here the conduction band will be completely empty the conduction band here before okay it will be completely empty here the conduction band will be completely empty here thus semiconductors behave as an insulator at zero kelvin the semiconductors will behave like an insulator at zero kelvin if the temperature increases if the temperature increases if the temperature increases i'll repeat again if the temperature increases the electrons get sufficient energy and jump to the conduction band so the electrons will jump from here to here so it will jump from valence band to the conduction band the electrons get sufficient energy and jump to the conduction band creating a vacancy for electron in the valence band so it will create a vacancy in the valence band as you can see that an electron 
goes from here to here, it will create a vacancy in the Helen's back here, as you can clearly see here. So, this vacancy can be filled by free electrons. This vacancy formed in the valence band can be filled by free electrons. This vacancy is called as hole. This vacancy itself is called as hole here. The creation of electron hole pair due to thermal energy is called thermal generation. The creation of electron hole pair due to thermal energy is called thermal generation. So, in thermal generation, number of holes is equal to number of free electrons. I will repeat again. In thermal generation, the number of holes is equal to number of free electrons. In semiconductors, both electrons and holes are charge carriers. In semiconductors, the electrons and holes, they both are charge carriers. So, then define hole. So, the vacancy in the valence band which can be occupied by electron is called a hole. The vacancy in the valence band which can be occupied by electron is called hole. The hole carries positive charge. The hole is always a positive charge. You have to remember this. Okay.